This video introduces the concept of chemical titration, which is often used to measure the activity of industrial chemical treatment solutions. When doing a titration, a basic set of equipment is required. You will need a beaker or flask in which to do the titration, a pipette and pipette bulb is used to accurately measure your sample, and finally you need a burette, which is a long tube marked with graduations with a valve at the bottom. It allows you to carefully add controlled amounts of titrant to your sample and easily measure it. The burette holds test solution, sometimes called titrant. The self-zeroing burette is a very convenient tool for doing frequent titrations rapidly. The burette sits on a reservoir of titrant and with a quick squeeze and release, it fills the burette and automatically sets the solution level to the zero or starting point. At the bottom, there is a stopcock or valve that you simply turn or squeeze to release titrant into your sample. With a little practice, you will learn how to control the valve to release a rapid stream or squeeze out a single drop to perfectly hit the end point every time. Titration is a key quality monitoring tool that makes sure your process stays within specification and continues to produce quality parts. Titration is a method of testing a sample of unknown strength by adding another chemical of known strength. When these materials react with each other, the concentration of the unknown can be determined. Titration is used most frequently in industrial manufacturing to determine the activity or strength of a chemical process bath. Calculations based on titration results give operators the information they need to make accurate adjustments to baths to keep them operating properly. Some additional equipment, such as a magnetic stirrer or a pH meter, can make your testing simpler and easier to do. Test solutions for the product you are using are also required. A list of these materials is on the last page of the Henkel Technical Process Bulletin. Titration test solutions usually include a titrant, which is a chemical solution with known strength, and an indicator, which provides a visual color change when the titration reaction is complete. The point of color change is often referred to as the end point. In some cases, such as acid-base titrations, it may be possible to use a pH meter as a substitute for a chemical indicator. During the titration, the carefully measured sample reacts with the titrant. The indicator does not directly play a role in the reaction, but changes color when it reaches a certain point. The amount of indicator is approximate. If you add a few drops more, it does not change the titration endpoint, but intensifies the color produced, making it easier to see. After you have collected a bath sample, it is important to accurately measure the quantity to be tested and a pipette is usually recommended for accurate dispensing of liquid samples. Never pipette by mouth, as this exposes you to potentially dangerous chemicals. Use a pipette bulb, properly mounted on the pipette, to draw up the sample. Draw up your sample until the level hits the marked line near the top of the pipette. You may have to do this a few times before you become proficient at getting the level just right. Once you have the right amount of sample in the pipette, you can allow it to drain into your titrating beaker or flask. Once the sample is in the beaker, add the required number of drops of indicator solution. Now that we have a measured sample of our bath and have added the recommended indicator, let's add some titrant. At first, we can add titrant rapidly. Then, as we approach the endpoint, we will begin to notice the color may change for a moment, then change back as we continue mixing. Once we begin to notice the indicator changing color, we need to slow down the rate that we are adding titrant, or we will go past the endpoint. Eventually, we will need to add the titrant at a slow rate, even one drop at a time. At the endpoint, the indicator will change color, and we can stop additions and read the graduations on the side of the burette. When reading a burette, look at the air-liquid interface. It will most likely be curved, like this. Always read the graduation at the very bottom of the curve for the best accuracy. Several titration points are referred to by the terms free and total acid or alkalinity. These are simply specific points on the pH scale associated with common indicators that are used as titration endpoint markers. The product data sheet or your Henkel representative can help you optimize the points or control range for your process. We recommend that you set a range, and when titrating your bath, that you manage it within that range by making appropriate additions of chemicals. Once you have completed your titration, record the value into your quality system. If additions or adjustments are required, record those too. 
The frequency required to test your process by titration will be determined by a number of factors, such as production volume, shift duration, and process variables. If you have questions or need assistance, just ask your Henkel representative. It is important to wear the correct protective equipment when handling chemicals and glass test equipment. Details may be found on the safety data sheet for the Henkel product that you are using. Eye protection and impermeable gloves are always recommended to avoid exposure to chemicals. Always review the safety data sheet before using a material for the first time so you understand any risks and what PPE may be required.